what is going on guys long time no see shannon is back in the saddle again been out for a while had some trouble with my left eye that i had cataract surgery on kind of went through a nightmare there for a while led to some major problems had a detached retina and all kinds of good stuff so I've been dealing with that for a while, but I am slowly getting back at it here. And I thought I would try to film my first video here and maybe just show you guys a few things that you can do to sort of break the monotony of all this craziness that's going on. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably out of work right now. And the boredom setting in, kind of going stir crazy and looking for some things to do. And this is going to be a little video just to show us some ways that we can kind of check out our tools and instruments to make sure that they're going to be ready to go for summer coming up because eventually this is going to come to an end and the phones are going to start ringing and we're going to be out there running around like madmen doing no AC calls. So we need to be ready for that. We need to be checking our instruments, checking our calibration and a few other things. So I'm just going to show you a few things in this video here that you could be doing just to sort of break that monotony of while you're out of work and you know just play with your tools a little bit make sure everything's good to go there's my little sticker that i sent off for klein was giving those away for free you could go on their facebook page and follow a link and fill out a little thing and they sent you that cool sticker i like that man you've got our back we've got yours klein like my klein tools so first thing we're going to talk about is temperature calibration because that is very important guys you can't be out there just going all willy-nilly thinking that you're accurate on your temperatures and you might be three or four degrees off and that can make a big difference on some of these new systems where we're charging by subcooling just a, you know three or four degrees is a lot that's a, a pretty big difference and we can overcharge or undercharge based on whether our instrument is correct or not now You'll have to give me a little bit of leeway here. You can see I'm sitting on 33 degrees. We're almost at 32, but I'm not going down to the coronavirus filled gas station to get some crushed ice. So I've got regular ice out of the freezer. So the proper way to do an ice bath, there's all kinds of videos on YouTube you can look up. There's some real good ones. You are supposed to use crushed ice. You're supposed to fill your cup or your container up with the ice and then take water and fill the cup up until the water just comes above the level of the ice, but the ice should not float off the bottom. The ice should stay down here at the bottom, so you don't want to fill it up all the way to the top with water. Just cover the ice is all you need to do. And since I just have regular ice cubes in there, that's not quite as cold, so I'm going to give it that little bit of leeway. If I had crushed ice, I would be on 32 degrees because I know my clamp is calibrated. The other thing you have to keep in mind, guys, these thermocouples that run off these, these K-types, anytime you see that right there, that's a K-type thermocouple, those are not all going to be the same. So let's say you've got one of those with a little bitty bead on the end of it, the, the little one that, that comes with like your field piece meter and stuff like that, and you can stick it in a little hole in the ductwork and take your temperature splits. That is going to show you a different temperature than these clamps are. So if I calibrated this instrument to a bead type thermocouple and put it right on 32 degrees, and then I put this pipe clamp on there, I cannot just assume that that is also going to read 32 degrees. Those pipe clamps do read differently. So if you're going to be using a pipe clamp exclusively, then you calibrate it to that pipe clamp. Or if you have a device that has two different slots that take temperature and you're going to use a pipe clamp in one and a bead type in the other one, you need to calibrate those accordingly and you know mark those so you know which is which. But of course, we're shooting for as close to 32 degrees as we can get. Like I said, I'm going to give this one a little bit of leeway just because this has been sitting here for a while while I was getting everything ready and we're not quite accurate on that. So we want to make sure that our temperatures are going to be accurate. So we want to do that. So that's one thing that we can do. Now, here's another thing that we can do. 
sometimes when we've got these things hooked up out there, we might be reading the temperature on our meter and then all of a sudden it starts getting all wacky on us and going wonky and flopping all over the place. Maybe you move this thing around a little bit and the temperature moves. So you're probably getting a short in this thing more than likely. So what we want to do, we want to whip out our good old alligator clamps and our meter and we're going to set this thing to ohms and then we're just going to hook up to these little pins here and we're going to take an ohm reading through here. Now, here's another thing to keep in mind, guys. These are thermocouples. These are not thermistors. I repeat, these are not thermistors. Thermistors are those little old teeny tiny things with those Molex plugs that are on all these new units, on our mini splits, on our inverters, on our new demand defrost. All these systems are full of little thermistors. And those thermistors are going to change temperature and as they change temperature they're going to change ohms so this reading that we're seeing on the meter is going to vary based on the temperature of that thermistor and you have to have a little chart to do that i've got a video that i made a while back i think it's been a few years but i'll try to put a link below here so you can guys can check out that video if you want to but you can find your temperature that you're getting there on your chart and it'll give you what your ohm reading should be and that way you know if your thermistor is accurate or not. These are not like that. This is going to be a set resistance through here, just like a piece of wire. It's going up one side, it's going through the clamp, it's coming back down to the other side, and this is always gonna be the same. So, in theory, what you could do when you buy a new thermocouple, a clamp or a bead or whatever you get, you could take that thing out of the pack and you could take this reading and then you could document that. You could write that down somewhere on the pack. You know, you could write it somewhere, take a Sharpie and put it on your clamp or whatever. Uh, but then you know what that was reading out of the pack. And it should read that a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. It should read that. But what we're looking for here is any kind of change in that reading. So if I come over here and I wiggle this wire around and this reading on the meter starts moving, let's see, there we go. If I start moving all around and jumping all over the place, then I know I've got a problem. That moved a little bit here because I just barely got my pins on there. But for the most part, when we're moving that around, that should not budge, that should stay the same. So if you've got one of them old bead types and you know, you've know you wadded that thing up and crammed it in your tool bag for years and it, it's always giving you problems out in the field, you do this test right here, I guarantee you, you're gonna see that ohms reading jumping all over the place whenever you move that wire. And usually they're gonna short right there in those stress points, right there. You're gonna get it right up here in the clamp, you know? So that's your typical spot where you're gonna see that. So. You're just looking for a good steady reading right here. Whether you're moving that around or not, that's gonna let you know there are no shorts in this wire, all right? And then with mine on these pipe clamps, I always roll this thing up like that. I don't ever wad it up. I don't ever mash it down or anything. I put it in a circle that is about the size of a baseball. And I slide that thing into a pocket in my pouch where I keep this and it's never gonna put any stress on this thing. My first old blue pipe clamp that I got from Field Piece, you know, like 11, 12 years ago, that thing never got a short in it the whole time I used it. And then finally, I did end up breaking the thing. But if you roll it up like that, it takes all the stress off of it, and it's always gonna maintain that shape. And that thing will just roll out there real nice and easy and then it, it'll just see it just goes right back so that's a good way to take care of those things instead of trying to wad them up and compress them and put a lot of stress on it they're going to last a lot longer that way now another thing while we've got our meter here and our leads we need to know that our leads are okay we need to know that our leads are not getting any shorts in them so let me get these disconnected here I can do this with one hand it's gonna be easier if I pause it give me just a second I'll get these out of here and we'll put our little tips in I'll be right back all right 
right, you guys, now we're back. We've got our tips in, and what we want to do, put our meter on ohms, okay? We've got infinity. We have nothing right now. OL, open line. So now we want to take our tips. We want to <clears throat> touch those together, all right? And this meter should zero out. Okay, so now we're not only checking our meter to make sure that our meter is going to hold zero, but we're also checking our leads. So you're going to do the same thing. You know, if I had four hands here, I could do it all, but what I want to do is start wiggling those wires around. With a really good tight connection right here, wiggle those wires around right there at those stress relief points, those banana plugs right there is one of the biggest places you're going to get a short, especially if you store your test leads with a lot of tension on that joint right there, you're going to get a, a short. So if you're moving those things around and you're not holding a steady zero, you know you're getting a short in there. Okay, maybe the short's just in one of the two leads. So how can we figure that out? Which one, we might have one good lead that we could use as a spare and the other one we just need to chuck it or maybe you know cut the ends off of it and use the middle piece of the wire that's probably still good because the shorts do occur here or here the middle part of the wire is probably okay unless you've slammed that in the door of a furnace or stomped it or something and maybe created a short but that middle piece of wire we could cut the ends off and get us a couple of alligator clamps off of ebay or somewhere and make us a custom set of jumpers but we need to know which one is good so if this was jumping around what we can do let's just unplug a lead we'll start with the red all right so we'll just set it to the side and now we're going to take our black test lead we're still plugged in over here and now we're going to take that and we're going to stick it on in the hole there and i know there's some that's what she said jokes going around right now and that's okay because we need to have some fun while we're quarantined all right, so you see we zeroed out. You see what we're doing there, guys? Are you following me? All we're doing is taking a path of resistance from one side of this meter to the other, and we're good. And see if I kind of wiggle her around. See how we're going to kind of drift and lose that? But as long as we got a connection in there, and we're wiggling this wire, again, we're, you know, wiggle the wire and see we're not moving. So we know this test lead is good. All right, so then we wanna check our red test lead. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna plug it into that red hole and then we're gonna bring it over here and we're gonna stick her on in here. And there we've zeroed out again. But let's say you didn't zero out or if you started wiggling this wire and all of a sudden we started jumping around, we know this is our bad one. Our black one's okay but our short is here in our red wire. So now we know we need to take this thing out of service because not only is it not gonna be working for us and you know we might get some readings that are gonna lead us down a rabbit hole. You know, we're checking something and you know we should have a closed switch, but it's showing that it's open. Well, it might be your damn test lead and you spend 30 minutes running around in circles trying to figure out what the hell's going on and it was your equipment because you didn't test it you never took the time to sit down and do what we're doing now and find that i've got a bad test lead i need to throw this thing away take it out of service buy some new ones get your boss to throw you a couple of bucks and get a new set <laughs> that's never going to happen but anyway uh like i said if you got a short in one and your wire is still in good shape, chop the ends off those things, get a couple of alligator clips at your electronic store. You know, if you still got a local uh, Radio Shack or something like that around, eBay, Amazon, whatever, get a couple of good alligator clamps, strip those things off, get you a soldering iron, make you a custom set of jumpers. This is good high quality wire. So, there we've tested a few things. We know that our temperatures are going to be accurate. We know that we don't have any shorts in whatever it is that we're taking temperature with. We've now tested our test leads. We've checked out our meter. We know, sh we know that she's going to be reading zero ohms and we're going to be okay there. So now let's head on out to the van and we will 
do a few things with our gauges and check the accuracy there. I'll be right back. And of course the phone won't pause. Okay. You're making me look bad, phone. Oh yeah, by the way, CLC knee pads. Those are awesome. That is a really good high density phone. Got to save those old knees. You young guys, you don't believe it. You think you're invulnerable, but you're not. Them old knees are going to start hurting. Mine kill me. I got to have a knee pad. I cannot get down without a knee pad. So, here we are out at the old van. And what we are going to do, we are going to check the accuracy of our gauges. And yes, indeed, Shannon is proudly rolling with analog technology. I don't really care anything about going to digital gauges. I love my analog gauges. These Titan manifolds are the best manifolds I've ever owned. You can see the date on the back right there. I have a set for 22 and a set for 410. I never mix my refrigerants. And these things have been bulletproof since 2008. And right now, I've got my blue cracked open. I have both my valves open and we are zeroed, okay? Now, is that good enough? Can we trust that just because we're zeroed, we're good? No, we can't. So, what we wanna do, we want to tighten our blue back up. We'll go ahead and tighten our valves up. And we'll go ahead and take our yellow hose and we'll just throw it on our jug here. All right, now this refrigerant is at standing ambient temperature and pressure. You guys see me posting that all the time in the chats and stuff. Oh, she's a leaking. We got a leaker. There we are, the yellow leaking. All right, so you guys always see me talking about temperature is pressure and pressure is temperature because one affects the other. That is probably the one thing I took away from school. The, the school that I went to, it was kind of a joke. You learned enough to get hurt. But the one thing old Shannon learned was temperature is pressure and pressure is temperature. They are both relative and one affects the other. So I have the old UEI on there and we're reading 67 degrees on the tank. I've just got some tape down there insulating it to the tank. So that's our standing ambient temperature. And if I was to take a gun and shoot this, you see that we're, yeah, 67. Look at that. So now we've tested another tool. I know my th thermometers are balls on. I like my little infrared. That is actually the commercial electric that they sell out at Home Depot. That one I have found to be very accurate. So you can see the model number on it there. I don't know if they still sell that because they just revamped the commercial electric line at Home Depot. And they've changed around some of the tools. I don't know if that's going to be one that they do. But as far as an infrared gun, that one has done me very well over the years. So now what we want to do is tighten up all these. Our tank is now open. I'm going to open up my valve. And... We are going to see what our standing pressure should be on a PT chart. So 67 degrees and we are up there at about 115, 16, 17, 18, about 118 or so right in there. And if we get our PT chart and we got R22 up at the top and we go down to 67 degrees over there and of course we don't have 67 but we're pretty close let's lay it down there so we can look at it so right there there's our 65 and our 70 degrees so we're going right in between there and I would say we would be somewhere you know around that 117 118 range 
So we know that that's what the pressure of this tank should be reading. Okay, so we've got that. Now we want to do one more test. We want to go ahead, close our tank off, get our hose off here, and then we want to go ahead and open up both our valves. So now what we have done, we have now gone through our blue hose, through our yellow, through our red, and we're now over here on this dial. And both of these should read the same, and this is probably the most important test. All right, so with both of our knobs open, these things should be reading the same pressure. This is the really important test because maybe one gauge is calibrated and the other one isn't. They're not calibrated to one another. We want them both to read the same thing. So we're reading about 86, between 86 and 87 on the blue. I know that's hard to see with the glare there. And then over there on the red, we are right there at the same thing. We're sitting right there at 85, just a little smidge over that line. If you can see that. So we're the same there and there. All right, so that's the real important one that we wanna do right there. So we know that we're reading the same on both sides. All right, you guys, that's gonna be it for this one. This is just kind of a little first video back in action here. I'm gonna be out in the field trying to do a few more videos coming up here soon. Uh, I've got a field piece meter that I want to try to do a series of videos on and kind of divide it up to a few short little videos and show you guys that new SE 480 meter that field piece just released. Um, it's a little bit smaller version of the 680. I know a lot of you guys have already been mentioning that that meter is just a little too big for you and I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. There's nothing wrong with that if you got plenty of room to a big tool bag to put it in that's a great meter it's got a lot of functionality on it but it's just a little too big for me so the 480 kind of is more my size it has all the functions on it that i need so be looking forward to some videos of that coming up soon um if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff i did here if you have any comments you know, if you saw me do something wrong, you can bust my balls over it. Leave it in the comments below there. I always like to hear from you guys. Let me know how you're doing throughout all this craziness. So I know if you leave a comment below, I know you're still alive and out there. And you're a COVID survivor like me. So you guys, we're just kind of waiting for all this to be over. Waiting for summer to roll around, hot weather to get here and... This is going to be forgotten about awful quick once the phone starts ringing and those calls start pouring in, man. We are going to be busy, busy, busy. So until then, you guys just stay safe out there. Hang in there. Do the best you can. Spend some time with your family. Just take care of yourselves and be ready for when the work comes back. But anyway, you guys, leave me some comments below. Like and subscribe on the video. And as always... I appreciate you guys watching, and I will catch you next time. See ya.